Well, folks, welcome to another Shop Talk. And we're here at Lakeside Speedway. And tonight, we're going to be having the Ron Schumann Classic right here at Lakeside. And, man, what a pleasure to have Ron Schumann sitting right here beside me. Uh, I can't tell you, Ron, how nice this is. Like I say, I was at Knoxville the year you won. Thrilling victory. I've seen you run different places. Um, it's just a real pleasure for the Cheese Works to have opportunity to uh, interview you for at least 10 minutes. Well, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Ron, who more or less got you interested in racing? Where did that desire to race come from? Well, I, um, you know, when I was a kid, I guess we raced bicycles a little bit, but my brother uh, was racing motorcycles, so I got a motorcycle and tagged along behind him. And then he got into race cars, and actually the same race car that he started in, uh, Leland McSpadden was his mechanic, then Leland bought the car, and when Leland was racing sprint cars, he let me take it to Tucson and run modified races down in Tucson, so I ran about three or four times in Leland's car, uh -huh. and then we built a, a modified over the winter time, and my dad, and, and uh, we put it together at our shop, and, and we raced it the next year, and raced it. I think three years with that car. Yeah. I know we were watching them old timers run here last night, and then I asked you if you'd ever run any of those. And I think you said it was a super modified. Yeah, that's what we call them, super modified. Yeah, my cousin raced the super modifieds around here. They were some cars to watch, but <laughs> not technically up to what we're doing nowadays. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> not even close. Uh, so uh, what track was it now you ran your first race? Was it Tucson? Yeah, probably, yeah, the old Tucson racetrack. And then uh, the first year that we ran the whole year in my dad's car, we ran Manzanita mostly, but there was a state super modified championship, and it ran Tucson, Casa Grande, Globe, and Phoenix. And uh, we ended up winning the modified championship. I don't know if it's because we went to all of them or not. But, um, <laughs> for, for whatever reason, we got lucky and won that. And we were second in points in the Phoenix and the PRA, which is Phoenix Racing Association. Yeah. So we had a real good first year, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, we missed the old days like that, I guess. I was going to say, I, I, I refer to it as the golden age of racing. To me, it was when I presume... It was more up to the driver because uh, basically everybody was building their own cars. Yeah. It wasn't like it is now. Go out and buy a kit and, you know, go from there. But guys were building their own cars in their garages. It had to have been quite an accomplishment to be able to come up with something competitive. Yeah, it really was. It was, uh, I mean, it was a lot of fun, and we had a lot of help from, from a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just... That was the only car I ever owned, and uh, owned it for two or three years, like I said, and then went off and started running sprint cars for other people, and yeah. and the story goes on. Uh, what what exactly, you mentioned the sprint cars, what exactly was it that kind of got you started with the sprint cars? I mean, I know you were already running open wheel if you were yeah. running super modified, but what was the desire with the sprints? I it, mean, was it was the next step up. Um, you know, like they ran modified on Friday nights and sprint cars on Saturday nights at Manzanitas. And, and I was just always just a couple, st you know, one step behind my brother. Like he started motorcycles. And when he got in cars, I got on motorcycles. Um, when I got in modifieds, he was in sprint cars. Mm -hmm. And so sprint cars was just the next step for me. I ran sprint cars before I ever ran a midget. So Oh, wow. Um, it, it was, uh, midgets weren't real big in Arizona at the time. And, and uh, so... There was a midget race, so I got in one of them long after I ran sprint cars. Yeah. What um, you've driven both winged and non-winged, and uh, I think probably you would agree over your career, you're probably more well known as a non-winged sprint car driver. Um, what's the big difference between driving a wing sprint and a non-wing? Well, the, the wing cars we ran back in the you know 70s and 80s are way different than what they're running now. Um, Motor-wise, chassis-wise, uh, the the whole picture is different. Um, you know, they're they're run almost wide open all the time. They're locked down to the racetrack, and their technology is a lot more than what ours was back then. You know, wing-wise and chassis-wise and motor-wise, and um, but it still. Um, it still came down to the mechanic and the motor was almost as important as the driver in a wing car. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not taking anything away from any wing drivers, you know, because uh -huh. they're great drivers. But um, without a wing, you can actually um, win a race with a sick motor. You can, um, you know, you can pass a guy when your motor's running sick sometimes when you get a good spot on the racetrack and he missed it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot more of, of the driver being able to find where he can run the car without you know, with, because there's not there's no traction really. I mean, you're in a controlled slide all the way around the racetrack. I was gonna say I had some in-car footage from last night that I haven't put up yet, but uh, I would say more than half the time the 
the car sideways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even around this track. Um, 79, pretty good year for Ron Schumann. Yeah, that was the year my boy Casey was born, so that was a good year. Uh, that was the year I won the Knoxville Nationals, which is, you know, it's what I'm known the best for. I mean, the biggest race I've ever won, people will know that I won the Knoxville Nationals. Now, is that what you consider? I know oh, that's yeah, no, what no, people no, I, think. No I, I, no, I think that, too. I, I think that, too. Be, and, and because of the notoriety. I mean, I won some big USAC shows, but they, nobody knows that I won the Hut 100 or the Hoosier 100 or or uh, the Holman Classic. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, nobody knows I won those shows, but they remember I won the Knoxville Nationals. Yeah. So. Well, you know something else, too? And it's, I guess the media has improved as racing has, but, uh, you know, those races probably don't get the coverage then that they get now, too. So it's probably not as well known that you did win those. Right. I mean, the Internet alone, just to know the results of, like, I can watch, I I can see the results the next day or that night of what Casey did that night Uh on the Internet. But sometimes you can even watch the race. I I think they call it streaming or something. Yes. I mean, I've actually watched him run a race back east on my my wife's computer, not mine. But um, so, I mean, the, the technology now is way, way, way more than what we had. I mean, if you got your name in the newspaper, you're doing pretty good back then and, <laughs> yeah. and now newspaper yeah. you, you know that's almost nothing compared to what yeah. you get on the internet speed sport news yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> if if you were at a track where they sold them that, that yeah. was another thing you had to be where they sold them uh sprint cars have really changed a lot over the years mostly on the safety fe- safety features not as much with the technical part is that really been or do you think a good thing for racing or should they be making bigger changes as far as the cars themselves to make them more technically up to date is the term i'm going to use i don't really know what they could do i mean i, I there's some pretty smart people that's been building sprint cars for a lot of years and i, I i'm guessing that they're they they've got it as good as they can get it because they, they haven't changed much like you yeah. said but um they're pretty safe you know the safety feature now the seats are way better mm-hmm. keeps their head from doing this um you know and now the kids have their own seats you know i never owned my own seat i just went and got in that car and went and got in that yeah. car and and uh so it, it's way different than what it was they got honda devices now i mean we used to run a neck strap and a helmet and that was you know gloves and that was it yeah. arm restraints but you know i think that uh i think that the uh, the driver's doing, if he's got all of his safety stuff on, he's doing about all he can do. And then as long as the car's put together safe, you know, got the hoop mm-hmm. over the drive line and some other things to keep the driver safe inside the cockpit, then it's up to the safety crew to get them out of the car if there yeah. isn't a problem. And, and they're doing, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of improvement on that also. Mm-hmm. Uh, another question about sprint car racing today. Uh, can or should sprint car racing be contained price-wise? I mean, would that really change the competition level that's a great question um you know what's good about the non-wing cars is like casey ran third last night in a car that had a motor that ron shaver sold used it was a it was new in 1992 back when i was racing so Mm -hmm. um you know i don't know what it sold for new i don't know what it sold for used but it's 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 been around for what 17 years and it's still running good enough to run in the top three at lakeside against the big motors you know against the good stuff Uh so i i you know those motors are pretty nice they they last a long time they now when you get into the wing deals Mm -hmm. you know then that's a different deal you know like you could buy a brand new non-wing motor for 25 or 30 grand it's going to you 20 races before you even have to have it rebuilt yeah. the wing races i, I hear are 40 000 to 50,000, and they're going to last three to six races depending on how quick you melt it down yeah. so and, and when we ran outlaws you know we'd run a motor 10 12 15 races before we even looked at it yeah. so mm-hmm. it's way different now than what it was then folks i think we're going to have to wrap it up our 10 minutes is up thank you ron thank you thank you for having me mm-hmm.